welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 122. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome. If you're new here, say hi down below. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews and we talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah, this is a hectic, busy week. <laughs> But it's a good one. There's lots of good things happening this week. Yeah, the scale is down. I know. <laughs> That's a super victory, right? It has been awesome. But here's the thing is that we are in the middle of our chopped challenge, which is just so much fun, right? Yeah, I love the opportunity to try new ingredients and everyone doesn't have to be scary. Like no. today is pepperoni day when we're taping this. I'm cheaping out and I'm going pizza. Right, you're not gonna try to like create some new dessert using I, pepperoni. No, for that you need to turn it over to Heath because yeah. like even for are quail eggs. He was making scotch eggs with quail eggs. And as he's making them, I'm sitting there going, wow, he's better than me because he actually sat there and peeled quail eggs. It was such a fun live for them. And I actually, I, I mean, in my opinion, I think they need to open up a restaurant. Yeah. Because even their presentation for him and Shelly are just, it's just beautiful. It's been a busy week. We did have a little bit of tragedy. If you didn't see our live stream the other day, Caleb woke us up on Thursday night or Tuesday, Wednesday night and said, um, hey, all of the chickens are outside of their coop and they automatically go in there at night. It was very and it strange. Locks them in. It was really strange. And we went out and we found out that a possum decided to hide inside of their coop and ambush them as they went to lay eggs. And we did have a little tragedy. Our lovely little Zilla got ambushed by the possum. Here's her like a little bit older than that day one. And then this, this I loved Zilla. Zilla was like awesome. She had a big, big personality. Yep. She was a big baby compared to the rest of them. That's why, you know, one of the reasons why we named her Zilla, kind of like Godzilla. She, right. was, she was, she was just- giant. She was a giant baby and she was a delight as all our chickens are. And I think all pets are. And when you lose a pet, it can really hit you hard. Yeah. And um, we talked about this on the live, but my response immediately was like, I'm gonna be grieving the next day and I better have a plan. Otherwise, as an emotional eater, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to derail myself and eat some things that I don't want to eat as far as like more keto snacks or eat extra cheese or I may graze all day if I don't have a plan. And so I just looked at Joe immediately after, you know, we buried her and said, hey, I'm gonna have to have keto chow tomorrow. Like, let's just make three keto chows and just have no negotiation. Yeah, because sometimes when tragedy strikes or something, it doesn't even have to be tragedy, just something unexpected comes up, we will, you know, shift back to old ways or, or we don't follow our plan. So the best way to do it is like, okay, in that moment, let's make a quick plan that's gonna be super, super easy to, you know, stick to. I mean, and that's like right now, this is a busy week because we're filming this right now on Saturday. Rachel is preaching a message at church tonight at six o'clock. She's gonna be there by four o'clock. She's then again tomorrow at 9 a.m., then again at 10.15, then again at 11.30. Then she needs to come home. We need to film a couple of videos. Monday, we're having a new air conditioner put in our house. Plus, I have to work. Tuesday, I have a bunch of work, we, all of which time we have videos to film because Wednesday morning at 4 a.m., we're jumping on a plane to head to Utah. My first trip to Utah. So it's like, it's really busy. And in those busy times, that's where it's really easy to get off track. So we've been making plans like, what are we gonna do? And we're incorporating super simple, go make a bunch of chicken, cook up a bunch of ground beef, make some keto chows so that in the hustle and bustle of everything going on, there's quick grab and go items 
to grab out of the refrigerator and not get off plan. Yeah, because you know, even our grab and go items need to have a plan. Because yes. if I'm like, this is just a grab and go day, then I could eat a ton of just pork rinds from the gas station, mm -hmm. whole bunch of quest bars that, yep. you know, maybe I don't want to have because I put it under the theme of grab and go. But let's have a plan even when you know it's gonna be a grab and go day. Yeah. So let us know down in the comment section, like what kind of plans do you make when you know there's gonna be some things happening. Also, if you're new to our channel, you may see a chat happening. I think it's gonna be like right over here. Right there. Um, if you're on a computer or down below, if you're on a mobile device. And what that is, if you're watching us at 10 a.m. Eastern time on Monday, every time we have Keto on the Couch, we do what's called the premiere, where the video is pre-recorded, which is us talking right now. Hello. But Rachel is live in the chat. I will be mowing a church, so I will not probably be in the chat, unless, of course, we have more rain like we're experiencing right now. Well, thank you very much for sharing your Monday morning with me. Yeah, so yeah, we are in the middle of a torrential downpour. It is like. So sorry for the thunder if you hear it. Mowing in between raindrops. Yeah, also sorry for the echo if you haven't seen us on the live. We're in the middle of renovating the studio. Uh, we don't have any sound control up on the walls right now. And I actually had no idea because I'm not a sound person. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know a whole lot about sound. I mean, heck, I don't know a whole lot about video. I'm learning as I go. We're winging it. But I did not know that wood absorbs echo. So this entire room was lined with wood and the sound was always pretty good. And then all of a sudden I took down the wood and I looked at Rachel I'm like, what did I do? It turns out that <laughs> Kenny Rogers really was correct. It's the wood that makes it good. <laughs> and we took down the wood. So now there's an echo. I actually went out to lunch with our technical director, Pastor. I guess that that's what his title is. I don't know. He's in charge of like all of the videography and everything else at the church. And we went out to lunch on Friday and and we kind of bounce things off of each other, you know, for him, me to him for church and him to me for our video and our channel. And I was asking about sound and he was like, well, he, he's actually a musician. He started off as a worship pastor. And, you know, he said, well, if you go to Guitar Center, when you go into the guitar room, you'll notice the entire room is lined with wood. It's true. And I did not know that. So. We apologize, we're doing the best we can, probably a couple more weeks of it, and then things can get a little bit better. But while we're talking about planning, mm -hmm. I wanted to just let people know they can make a couple plans for this week. Yes. So if you are in the Texas area, this coming weekend, Goody Beats is having a hoedown. I think that's what he's calling it, right? Yeah, yeah. A hoedown, right? It's a barbecue hoedown on Saturday, July 17th from 3 p.m to 7 p.m. in San Marcos, Texas. It is a free event, and there are going to be lots of cool people from the keto space, including Nicole Burgess and Dr. Barry and lots of other people. So if you are in the area, go ahead and head on over there. The first 50 people even get a free goodie bag. Yeah. And uh, Logan is just a cool guy to hang out with. So you definitely want to get a chance to get over there if you can. And if you're in the Utah area, Come see us. Because we're gonna be in Utah from Wednesday until Sunday. So if you're in the Utah area on Saturday at 6 p.m., whatever time zone Utah is in, yeah. I don't even know. Uh, not Eastern. Uh, <laughs> at 6 p.m., we will be having a meetup at the Keto Chow headquarters. All the information for that is linked down below. So go ahead and check that out. You can even register and let everybody know, hey, I'm going to be there. Well, and also let us know when we see you, what is your handle name? Because we're, yes. we're two crazy ketos, but in real life, we're not two avocados. No. And so I would not recognize us yeah. if I just only knew us by our avocados. So we want to make sure that we see you and we know you and we'll know you by your handle. Yes. Right? So And let us know, like, hey, this is my screen name on Facebook. This is my screen name on YouTube because a lot of people have different names and we want to, we know people by, yeah, the name that shows up on our screen. And let me know as I approach you for a hug, whether or not you're okay with that hug because I'm a hugger. What if I'm not okay with a hug with you? Well, you can't, I mean, you can't opt out. It's uh. like the high five. <laughs> if, if we put a high five, you've got to high five. 
<gasps> this is in our marriage vows. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we do have to high five. I'm really excited about going to Utah though. We're excited about seeing so many different people out yeah. there. It's just lots of good things happening, even in the midst of the tragedy of losing one of our chickens. It was an unfortunate thing, but I'm excited about everything else that's going on. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's. We have a bunch of different things that we wanna talk about when it comes to all the comments and stuff. So let's take a quick commercial break, and then we're gonna come back with all of our Facebook comments, our YouTube comments, and our subscriber of the week. What do you have over there that I do not have over here? Nothing. That looks a lot like brownies. These are so good. This is a new recipe we did. This is a high protein, low carbohydrate, peanut butter brownie. And the video for this is coming out very shortly. It's really good. So do you want one? Yes, I want so one. So make sure you are bite. subscribed to the channel, that you like the butt video, like hit the like button down below. But the most important thing, if you wanna see this video, you need to hit that bell button down below right next to the subscribe thing. And listen, this takes two seconds, so go do it right now. But what happens is when you hit that little bell button, that is gonna notify you that we've got a new video coming up. And I don't know what day we're gonna release this video, and we're not gonna let you know ahead of time. So you definitely want to hit that little bell button. So. I'm actually gonna put these over here. Why? To, because I don't want you to be tempted by them. But they're really good and they're high protein and there's not a bunch of junk in it. And... I'm such a good wife though, like amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take the hit for you. Okay, sounds good. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. Let's head into the subscriber of the week. And uh, we don't have a Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week this week. Wait, what? There's Why? No, no college, because nobody inspired me. That is baloney. <laughs> I think it's more of a case of you had so many subscribers of the week that you didn't have room for a professor. That, that is actually true. And honestly, I mean, hey, we, we're always looking for like some kind of a post that like is inspirational, but to me, the thing that inspires me most is seeing stories. Victory. Seeing victories. And if you're new to our channel, I know we say this every single week, but every single week there's somebody new to the channel watching Hi, Keto guys. on the Couch. And so we have a Facebook family group and there's a link for it down below. And if you're not a member of it, you need to go join it. Now, if you don't do Facebook, don't worry, we got you because you can send us your story at stories at twocrazyketos.com. And the reason we ask you to send us your story is not because we need content, but because your story is going to inspire people, especially us. Yes. But what's gonna happen is right now, there is somebody out there who is going through either what you've gone through in the past or what you are currently going through, and they think they're alone. They yeah. think they can't do this. They think that nobody gets me. And when they read your story, they're gonna be like, oh, somebody gets me, somebody understands. But not only that, they person may be going through the same thing that you're going through and you may be at home right now going, nobody gets me. And when you yeah. put up your story and then they respond to your story, you're gonna be like, oh, it blows you away. somebody else gets me. So please, 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 please share your stories. And again, if you're not a member of Facebook, you can go join it. If you don't wanna be on Facebook, you can go ahead and send us your story at stories at twocrazyketos.com. Speaking of getting me, Okay. Could you get me a look and make sure I don't have brownie teeth? No, you don't have any brownie yeah. teeth. You have coffee I, teeth. Well, because I could go on for 40 more minutes. <laughs> and with, I wouldn't tell you. With a brownie on my teeth and he'd be like, it's fine. Okay. So this week we have three subscriber of the wow. weeks and these are success stories. And also, by the way, when you show your story, you don't have to be at the end of your journey. No. You could be a week into keto. It could be something like, hey, for the last 25 years, I have had a 12 pack of Coke every single day. Yes. And this is the first time that I haven't had one can in 24 hours. That is a success story. That and we huge. want you to share that story. Yep. Okay, so please share your stories. So the first story is from Andrea. Hey, Andrea. And Andrea said, my starting weight was 237 pounds. I thought it was 227, but I made an error. I tried everything and I'd lose and I'd gain right back. At the beginning of the pandemic, I was mentally done for, from losing my son. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh my sorry. gosh, I'm so sorry. I just took pics on July 4th and I realized, holy moly, 
I'm hot. Oh. Here's the before and after pic, plus before and after of my daughter at 12 years old with me and currently at 26 years old and on her own weight loss journey. Oh my gracious. My current weight is 168. Wow, that's a huge weight loss. That I'm is awesome. I'm five foot eight with Keto Chow and Keto Life. This has made it possible for me to have a healthy life. Also, I'm 52 years old. Are you ready for this? Yes, this is I gonna am. blow you away. Okay. Um, yes, Andrea, you are totally hot. Oh Amazing. my gracious. And look at your lovely, lovely daughter. I am so sorry though, first of all, yes. about the loss of your precious son. Oh mm. my gracious. Yeah, you look amazing. Congratulations. Thank you for sharing this story. If you hear that noise, that is that Tabitha has finally decided that she's gonna she start that chewing on the femur and she's in her crate right now, rattling it around. So we apologize for that. Yes. Okay, so the next story is actually gonna be from Jean. Hey, Jean. Jean said 13 months and 90 pounds. Wow. My husband is down 54 pounds. Amazing. While the weight loss has been amazing, the best has been the loss of all of my fibromyalgia pain. Wow. I'm able to do all of the things that I haven't been able to do for years. I'm off all fibromyalgia meds as well as blood pressure medication and no more chronic sinusitis. Wow. We have just bought kayaks. And to celebrate, we just booked the low carb yes. cruise that Rachel and Joe will be coming on on May 15th of 2022. That's awesome. We have so much energy now that my husband and I have been working two jobs each and paid off serious debt. Wow. If you are on the fence with this way of eating, please give it a try. Oh my gracious. Gina! Wow. Gina, <laughs> you and your husband look amazing. I cannot wait to give you a hug in person, girl. I am so excited about this. And there's so much victory going on that yeah. you really need to take a moment. I mean, you're kind of a professor of awesomeness right now, right? right. Because you've got this major weight loss. You're doing it with your husband. You guys are having like some, some cute couple goals going on up there. You're paying off debt yep. and you're going, you know, to get more active. Like that is amazing. This, this should be an advertisement. What a win. <laughs> what a win. And I love this because hear what she's saying. She is paying off debt in the midst of doing keto because a lot of people are, are, it's are too like, expensive. it's too expensive. It's going to be an expense. They're, they're able to do it because you really can keep it simple and use inexpensive ingredients to have weight loss success. Yeah, and even there, you know, people do message us all the time and they say, you know, keto is too expensive. You know, I have to buy more meat. Yes, you probably have to buy a little bit more meat. Now, as Dr. Barry always says, you can do keto on hot dogs and mustard. Yeah. The cheapest keto food, which is probably gonna bring you more nutrition than anything else, is eggs. Yes. And you don't even have to eat pasture raised eggs, which no. means you can go to the store and get eggs, a dozen eggs, for a lot of times less than a dollar a dozen. So I don't think there's anything else out there that you can eat that is cheaper than that and then top off the nutrition. But here's the thing. As you want to eat more meat, as you start switching from the standard American diet over to a keto or a carnivore way of eating, Guess what you're not spending money on? Medicine. Medicine. $7 Starbucks drinks, $5 bags of potato chips. So all you need to do is simply take the money that you were spending on that and shift it over. And all of a sudden you're gonna go, wait a second, I'm eating better food, higher quality food, and my food budget's gone down. See, cause yeah. everything is relative, you know, I, I look at things like I used to buy $7 Starbucks drinks, but I don't want to spend $3 on a tube of toothpaste. Like what's right. wrong with me? So if I was willing to spend $7 on a Starbucks drink, which I literally downed in like five minutes, why am I not willing to spend $7 on a steak for myself? It's a mental ship. Yep. But I have a feeling that she is super happy not paying for as many doctor's appointments, yep. not paying for that fibromyalgia medicine, and instead putting that towards her ribeye budget. Yeah. So we have one more subscriber of the week, and this one is Essie Stover. Hey, Essie. They say, I have been a silent member of this Two Crazy Kiddos family until now. I wanted to share my weight loss and health improvement journey. I have been heavy my whole life. I lost a good chunk of weight several years ago by portion control and daily walking. 
Then all of a sudden, I started on a downward spiral of massive overeating and no exercise. Almost one year ago today, end of July, 2020, I told myself enough is enough. I was borderline diabetic, morbidly obese, and every joint in my body ached on a daily basis. I need my husband to help me with things like tying my shoes and helping me out of my living room chair in the evenings. I was afraid of what might be next for him. Would he have to help clean me after using the bathroom? TMI. I really felt like I was going to live a much shorter life than what I should. I told my husband that I wanted to try keto as a way of life and ask if he would do it with me as a support system. He also was overweight and diabetic, and he said yes. I weighed 275 pounds when I started. I've lost 70.5 pounds and 19 total inches. That's super important since then. I started started off keto and have headed more to the keto carnivore way of eating. My joints are tons better. My lab numbers are excellent and I don't need to depend on my husband to help me with my shoes or getting out of the chair. I'm a 54 year old woman that feels like I'm in my early thirties. Thank you to everyone for their uplifting stories and shares that have helped me keep going. I never want to feel like I did a year ago. This is what motivates me. I still have several pounds to lose, especially belly fat, but I don't feel like this is a race. I will just keep on with my journey and know that my body will heal itself and take me where I need to be on the scales. By the way, my husband has lost almost 40 pounds. Wow. Oh my gracious. You look good, girl. I love those cute shorts you've got on too. I mean, yes, you look so good. And I love now that your husband isn't going to need to help you out of the chair anymore. Now he's going to help you into a new adventure. Maybe you guys can go do something active and enjoy each other as a couple without having to worry about like that caretaking for one another. Yeah. Thank you for that. I mean, thank you to all of you who have shared your stories. I can't tell you how many times we have sat here in the house, sat here at this table and said, do we make an impact? Like, uh, is why are we doing this? Are we making a change in anybody? And when I read that, it just, it keeps us going, right? It keep it motivates me to keep doing what I'm doing because there was a point in my life where I was like, wow, like Rachel's gonna be pushing me around in a wheelchair yeah. very shortly for the rest of my life. And you know, I'm going to be at that point I, you know, where I'm going to be a burden on her. And I don't want to be a burden on my wife. And I don't want to get to a point where I've got such heart problems and health problems that like she's going to have to worry about, like, are we going to go somewhere and I'm going to drop dead somewhere? And so keto has given me that freedom back to know that I'm not going to do that to her when it comes to pushing her around a wheelchair because of my diet. But when I see these stories, it just keeps me going. Well, I hope that all of you guys heard the shout out that she gave to you because she said you were a motivator. All of the stories that she's hearing, she's been watching silently. And I'm so glad that you're not silent anymore, but that you're sharing your story. And I hope more people will be motivated to be like, hey, I've been a Two Crazy Ketos follower for the last like two years and I've never said anything. It's never too late to jump in and let your voice be heard. But I really hope that you guys all hear that she was influenced by you and your yeah. stories. Yeah. So we're going to get into the comments from YouTube last week. Now, last week's YouTube was our Keto on the Couch was live, so there weren't as many comments. So I pulled some from other videos. So now I'm going to have a shameless plug. Uh-oh. We need you guys to comment on videos because yeah. I do need content for Keto on the Couch when it comes to comments because we like reading your comments. I mean, yes, your comments will help the YouTube algorithm as far as you know engaging with us and it tells YouTube, go ahead and share us. But we like reading the comments. We do read every single comment and we like reading them and we like sharing them and we're inspired by them. And so please, please, please leave comments down below on the videos. You know, let us know what you think of the video. Hopefully it's a good thing. Um, let us know like what your response is, how you're dealing with things. Just please share all of that stuff down below in the comment section of the video. Well, because all those comments really add to the fun of it. And you can ask us anything. We're, we're not shy. We're not timid. I mean, obviously. And I was thinking even last night when we were in uh, the Friday night hungry horde um, get together, just talking to, to Heath about his past as a professional poker player. It was yes. just really, really interesting. 
interesting. And so help us like add to the dialogue. It makes it fun. I do want to do another little shameless plug and give a shout out to our son, John Paul and his wife, Michelle, yes. because yesterday we actually went up to visit them. They cooked for us on the smoker that we gifted them. We gave them a nice pit boss smoker. It's actually our old smoker and John cooked some awesome burgers and chicken. It was nice because they know what our lifestyle is and how we eat. They're way into CrossFit and fitness. Mm -hmm. We're into like the food side of it. And so they had some nice chicken breasts for us. They had some nice burgers. Michelle made an awesome spinach dip. It was wonderful. And you know what we felt like? Supported. Yeah. And you know, your your children especially, sometimes we're only thinking about the people older than us or the same age in our family and whether or not, you know, they like the keto lifestyle that we are living. But I have found almost unilaterally the kids are really encouraging the parents, right. right? Because they want their parents to live a long time, right. you know? So if this is supporting them and they see their, their parents looking different and feeling different, I mean, when you were riding on your motorized scooter through Disney World, John Paul was right next to you. Right. So he knows what you used to look like and live like, and he knows how you feel now. And so right. they want to support you. And I thought that was cool. Plus, we got to hang out with our grand puppy. Right. That's always the most <laughs> important thing, right? Jenny. Let's get into this week's comments. And uh, the first one is going to be from Zoe. Hey, Zoe. Zoe said, thank you for the reminder to prioritize protein. Knowing on jerky, uh, I guess gnawing on jerky now instead of cheese or nuts. You know, I need that redirection too. Mm -hmm. Because when you go to places like Costco or Sam's Club, there's always these fun keto snacks that are, you know, prepackaged snacks. Mm -hmm. And and I love them, but I can definitely go through, you know, the nut hole of shame. Right. I can go down the cheese spiral. So, you know, making that switch to some healthier, you know, beef sticks, yeah. meat options. There's a lot of grab and go stuff within the meat option. And there's not necessarily anything wrong with buying some of those prepackaged snacks no. if you are able to, you know, portion control. Stick which to one. Sometimes you're not. I mean, when we were in Sam's Club last week shopping for all of the meat for Anthony's 21st birthday party, uh, we came across this bag of cashews and I, the bag was about this tall and it was about this wide and it was on sale for $8. And I looked at Rachel we want and so she bad. looked at me and she's like, let's, and I'm like, this is not oh, good. Oh, I want that. But here's the thing. I'm going to finish that bag in the same day, right? Yeah. Like nuts are just, they're a rabbit hole for us. Not that you can't have nuts, but if you know, like one serving just is never going to cut it for me. We just can't have them in the house. If we really want nuts, we actually have to go out and buy them. And what we do is we're willing to spend the extra money to buy the single serve pouch. And then when you buy that single serve pouch, you start looking like, wow, do I overdo nuts a lot? Yeah, right? because you're there's like, like six in this package. That's it. Yeah. And so, you know, right in the moment when we wanted some, you know, something as a treat, Joe was like, how about I buy you a new flavor of coffee that you haven't had and right. treat me that way. So it was like, yeah, because this is going to be a treat, something right. I don't have currently in my pantry. And I'm not going to walk away from this purchase, like feeling bad. Yeah. But thank you for trying to pick up on the protein thing. That is something that we have been talking about for several months now. If you this haven't seen the video, we have a video right up here talking about eating on a more one-to-one -one lifestyle, which again, we want to state one to one is not low fat. What it is is saying, hey, we need to eat protein. We came from this whole era of keto three years ago where protein was demonized. That right. If you ate too much protein, you were going to go into gluconeogenesis. And all of a sudden, even though you weren't eating sugar, the protein was going to turn into a jelly donut. Yeah. And it's just not true that we need to have protein. I was looking at your hair yesterday because you're going to get your hair done for I Utah. I am. And I don't even know if you know because you can't really see the top of your hair. Right. But you have, no kidding, that much growth because if you looked at our old videos, Rachel never had you, the same color. Well, you can see how spotty it is. Go right. back and look at some of those early ones. And we were keto. Right. Absolutely keto. But it was thin. But it was thin and it was patchy. And I had, I mean, we always had to do the bald spot check. Right. Does anybody else out there, any ladies out there or gentlemen, ever tell your, your partner, hey, can you spot me on the bald spot? Like, what's, it, what's going on back? <laughs> 
there. And well, now you don't I don't have one anymore. I don't have that problem. But what I was looking at yesterday was how much growth you have since your last haircut. Yeah. And just when they came in, they did a the little bit of shine and stuff. And it is amazing. And that is because of the increased protein and more muscle definition and how much better you feel. And also protein it's going to fill you up and satiate you in the moment. Yes. So what we tell people is, hey, listen, if you are hungry, eat some protein, eat some beef steaks, eat a piece of chicken, you know, just go eat a hard boiled egg, make that your go-to snack because that's gonna fill you up. As much as I love brownies and we have that and it's a nice little thing to have with a meal, mm -hmm. but if I'm hungry, the last thing you want to do is grab some kind of sweet thing because it's not going to satiate you. No. But some protein will satiate you. And again, one-to-one -one is not low fat. It still works out to be about 65% fat, which on the standard American diet is excessive amounts of fat. Yeah, it is. I'm sorry, I had to debone Tabitha, which sounds <laughs> terrible, but it was just take a bone away. That thing is huge. And gosh, like she's, she's way in the it. other room and like, oh my gosh. So. Okay, next comment is from Mad Vito. Hey, what's up? They say, this week I noticed my non-scale victory. I'm headed on a cruise in November and realized all my excursions are active. That's cool. I've scheduled snorkeling, river tubing, and using underwater scooter. Underwater scooters? Wow, that's are awesome. Are you kidding? That is so exciting. But yeah, I can totally imagine in the past, like if we were going on a cruise, mm -hmm. All of our excursions would would involve food and sitting down or the casino. That's it. Right? Yeah. It's like active. Abs I, again, we look at last week at Anthony's twenty first birthday party and having a forty foot tall water slide in yeah. our front yard. There is no way I could have climbed that thing three years ago. There is no way Rachel's mom could have climbed that no. thing three years ago. And even if I could have managed to get up there. I would have been in such pain yeah. after coming down that thing. But that's something about the way we eat. You feel strong. I yeah. mean, you, I feel like we approach active things. And in the past, it was like, I wonder how badly I'm going to hurt on the other side of this activity. Now it's like, I got this. Like, right. I'm, I mean, I'm going to build strength. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Meg. Hey, Meg. Meg said, I wanted to share this with both of you. I was watching older videos and I came across your pancake video made with keto chow. Yesterday, I made them for my husband and myself, and he is in keto, but he really liked Aww. them. I used banana keto chow with English oh, toffee yum. stevia. That stuff is amazing. Today, I made them again, and I added Loran banana flavoring. Fantastic. Yum. Meg, thank you so much for giving our recipe a try. We're always so excited when we make something that people enjoy eating. Yeah. And what I like about that recipe, now, if you haven't seen that video, I'll go ahead and link it right over Rachel's head. But what I like about that recipe is it's very easy and quick to make. Quick. I can't tell you how many times we've gotten home from a busy day or we'll just be laying in bed and Rachel's like, you know, we had our dinner and she's like, I'd like a little bit more food. What can we do? Well, I could make some pancakes because it's literally go on, turn on the Blackstone or you can make them in a frying pan, but we just cook everything on the Blackstone. Turn on the Blackstone and honestly, by the time I've mixed it all up, the Blackstone still hasn't even heated up to the point of cooking it. That's it's how amazing. fast it is. It's 30 seconds, right? Well, and I mean, we eat it a lot for dinner because yep. I just, I like pancakes for dinner. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think about getting ready to school. When it's time to get back to school and you've got busy mornings or you're trying to go back to the office, there's a lot of people that are going back to, you know, in-person office type work that's quick, right. you know, you are you don't have like a really long morning to get breakfast ready. So it's just a quick option. And talk about high protein. You're talking about a scoop of keto chow. So you're getting all of your vitamins and your nutrients, all of that stuff, along with four eggs. So it's really filling. You're getting lots of protein. There's nothing bad in it. So if you haven't tried it, go ahead and try it. And also if you are interested in keto chow, there's a link down below for that. I highly recommend Caramel Macchiato. Me too. Um, and when you use that link, you will get 10% off your entire purchase. Okay, so the next comment is from Pat. Hey, Pat. She says, so I just went to Urban Dictionary to find out what it means to Porky Piggott. Lord mercy. I know which definition you mean, but talk about risking getting demonetized. I know every single time. I don't even know what is the Urban Dictionary like 
term, what is it? Wear no pants. Well, I know I know what porky pigging it means. It means be like porky pig and you wear a shirt and no pants. And, right. And that came from Heath. Yeah. But what does the Urban Dictionary say about it? I don't now know. Now I'm going to have to look it up. Well, I'm more concerned if we had gone the route of Winnie the Poohing it. <laughs> Don't start him. <laughs> same shirt, same situation. <laughs> this sounds worse. Okay, next one is from Furry. Hey, Furry says, hey, guys, buy Roscoe a joint supplement on Chewy. Helped okay. my eight-year-old overweight cat. He He's on a diet, and he's now jumping everywhere. He may also be in pain, and this will help. D-A-S-U-Q-U-I-N. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Dasquin? For for cats. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So yeah, if you don't know, we do have uh, two cats. One of them is Roscoe, who is 15 years old, and he's just getting to the point now where he can't jump anymore. Now, the funny thing is, is he doesn't act old other than the fact that he doesn't want to use the litter box anymore. He wants to go outside of the litter box. Yes. But, well, I have to say this. In 15 years, he's never used a litter box. No, he's always gone outside. Yes. But now in his old age. He doesn't want to go outside He anymore. doesn't want to bother to go outside. Right. So now. It's, I'm going to go in front of the litter box. Inside. Which at least is on, side of, on top of tile. And we've got a Scentsy wall warmer right over it. That thing is working hard. <laughs> it is working hard. So, yeah. He, he just has gotten to the point now where he just can't jump the heights. Whereas like this table here, he used to be able to jump all the way up no on it. Problem. Now he would have to jump up onto the chair that we're sitting on to get up onto the table. So thank you very much for yeah. that. And guys, thank you very much for all of your recommendation when it comes to our pets. Anybody who knows us knows we love our pets and we want them to have a really good life and anything we can do to help them have a good life, Heck yes. we wanna do. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Glenn. Hey, Glenn. Glenn said, I cannot find ultra pasteurized Fairlife milk, only ultra filtered. You show an ultra pasteurized on the other milk brands labels, but not on the Fairlife bottle. It, it is ultra pasteurized, but also ultra filtered. I went on Fairlife website and cannot find anything about ultra pasteurized. So it is ultra filtered and that is what you're looking for. And there are only two brands that I personally know of. And if anybody knows of any other Share. brands, let us know down in the comment section. But the two brands are Fairlife and the other one is ultra. And I can't even get Ultra in our area anymore. Nobody has it anymore. So I don't know if they've stopped making it. But what that is, is the Ultra filtered means they are filtering out 50% of the lactose sugars. So when you go look at the nutrition label, you're going to notice it has half of the amount of carbohydrates and sugars as regular milk. And why that's important is because when you're making the yogurt, you're already starting off with less sugar. There's enough sugar to make the yogurt, but you don't have to have the high amount of sugar in yeah. the leftover. And when you do have all of those extra sugars, it's in the form of whey. So all you're going to be doing is straining it off anyway. So when you use the Ultra, I for us, we find that we end up straining off almost three cups of whey. And it literally comes out to be about one total carb per serving, which is what makes it so good. And you have the option of either using you know, the regular fat, or you can use the lower fat if you want a higher protein, lower fat yogurt. And then you, we also have the option where you can add in heavy cream if you want a really high fat, really thick, delicious yogurt. So there's lots of ways to make it. But yeah, you are looking for the ultra filtered. The only brand that I know of in my area right now that we can get is Fairlife. The ultra pasteurized is something different. That is where they're heating it to a high temp for a really quick minute. And what that's doing is that's killing off all of the bacterias and everything. And you definitely want that. If you're using something like raw milk, you would actually have to heat that up to kill it all first. Otherwise you won't get yogurt because the yogurt cultures are gonna have to compete with the bacteria <laughs> that was already in there. Is so that funny? When you're buying ultra pasteurized, you don't have to do that process. You can throw it in the Instant Pot, mix it with your culture, and you're good to go. The Instant Pot does everything else. So you want ultra pasteurized and ultra filtered. Okay, next one is from Donald. Hey, Donald. They say, my hub has been doing keto because of you guys and lost 25 pounds. We love you both. 
listening to whether to stop or not, I say no because I want to be like you all too. Oh, that's actually from the video where we had the vlog and I asked you like, should we quit keto? Have you ever right. thought about quitting keto? Now their hub gets frustrated too, but he looks great and now shaves his head. All right. I won't do that, but we are inspired, so keep it up. I suffer OA now in my knees, and inflammation is not good for me. I can barely walk. We go full RV living in January, oh, so cool. keto it will be. Thank you. Well, thanks, Donald. Thank you very much, Donald. Yeah, you know, when we said that in the video, like, I, there have, there have been times in my life where I'm like, hey, should I stop keto because I'm not seeing the results? Yeah, but it's probably about a 10 second thought. And it's more of frustration because you see other people doing things that I don't consider healthy and having some kind of result. But yeah, I'm never going off of it. If I gained 100 pounds on keto because I'm overeating or because I'm eating too many keto snacks, so long as I have the decreased inflammation and I feel better, I'm never ever going off of this lifestyle. Yeah, it's funny. Those thoughts come up when I am planning a particular Rachel pity party. Yeah. Sometimes you just have a pity party, right? And sometimes the theme of that pity party is it's not fair or should I just quit this? You know, it's it's a pity party theme, mm -hmm. but we don't want to stay at that party. Let's right. let's shut that party down. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take one more commercial break and then we're going to come back with all of our Facebook comments. What are you doing? Saving you. You're Saving welcome. Saving me? You are welcome. I'm that, sparing that's you. That's my breakfast. That shouldn't even say that, but it, it's not really my breakfast, but it could be my breakfast. I think it's a delicious breakfast option. <laughs> it is very high protein, very high protein. So th that's not a bad breakfast. Before we get into the Facebook comments, I did want to make a comment since we are coming back from commercial. We had a couple comments on some old videos, like way too many commercials. And I want you guys to know, if you see commercials in the middle of a video, other than keto on the couch, we didn't put them there. No. YouTube put them there. So YouTube always had this thing where like a video had to be over 10 minutes, which we don't know how to shut up. So most yeah, of our videos that's are. That's no problem for us. Um, if there was over 10 minutes, you could put video, you know, ads in the middle, but you had to do it. And then a few months ago, they decided any video over eight minutes, we're gonna automatically add different ads inside of a video and they do it every five minutes. We didn't have any control of that unless we are willing to go back to every single video we have and take it off, which we have tried to do, but some of them I've missed. There's like, I don't even know at this point. Is there like a thousand videos? I don't even know We're anymore. getting close to a thousand, and I'm thinking like, if we were to go back and like filter through all of that, we would have no videos moving forward for a while. Right. Because it would just take up so much time. So we're really, really sorry yeah. about that. So the way we work it is all of the videos that we have other than Keto on the Couch, a lot of times they will put an ad before, and an ad after, but we do specifically tell them, do not put ads in the middle. Keto on the couch, the reason we take commercial breaks is because they will automatically put ads yes. in every five minutes unless we actually take a pause, put up a black screen, and then it goes, okay, they only want two, and this is where they want them. Because yeah. I can't stand YouTube where it puts an ad like, hello, I my name is, and then all of a sudden, like, there's a commercial, right? Yeah. In the middle of a word or a sentence. So we apologize for that. We do try to go back. If you do see a video that's got a whole bunch of ads in the middle, go ahead and send us an email. Let us know which video it is. And then we can go and like tell it to, you know, don't do this to us. Like, yes. I don't, we don't want you to see ads. Please stop. Also, even though we, we make no money off this, but I do want to recommend if you don't like YouTube ads, join the YouTube premium. It's not that expensive and it's really awesome to not watch ads. My kids love it too. And I would say that 98% of our TV viewing is done through YouTube Yeah, and for them also. And probably like kids and grandkids, like if they're on the same account with you, they would appreciate it well, also. If you get the YouTube family plan, the premium family plan, which is only like $5 more than the individual one, you can have five different YouTube accounts 
all not have ads. So it's really cool. So we literally have is that nobody in the house, because we all have different YouTube mm -hmm. accounts, nobody in the house has to watch ads, which is really, really cool. Now, if you do want to know how can I support you guys, and that would be go ahead and watch the ads that do show up before or after, and you can also use the links down below. That is the best way to support us. We don't like putting any of our stuff behind like paywalls, and that's why we no. don't have recipe books or anything like that. But if you want to support us, that is a great way to do it. Also, you can go ahead and join our Patreon account, which is all linked down below. With all that being said, let's yes. get into the Facebook comments. And we're back. First one is Susan. Hey, Susan. She says, hello, everyone. I'm new here. Just wondering how many of you do intermittent fasting? If so, how many hours? Also, how many go by total carbs? I'm excited to try this way of neck instead of net carbs. I have been going by net carbs for a while and not having much luck. Excited to be a part of this family. Any advice will be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Okay, so intermittent fasting, we do it off and on, which I personally think is the best way to do it because we like to change things up. You know, your body is an amazing piece so of machinery. Smart. And when you do anything, like the same every single day, whether it's eating the same exact foods or having the same exact eating windows, your body starts to adapt I got and this. it's like, okay, I, I'm going to overcome this. If you eat a thousand calories every single day for an extended period of time, your body's going to be like, I'm going to figure out how to operate on a thousand calories. I'll okay. just slow everything down. Same thing with intermittent fasting. So when we do intermittent fasting, we kind of go by like, I'm going to eat when I'm hungry. There's days where we wake up and we're like, I want to eat something at 10 a.m. There's other days where we wake up and our first meal is not till four or five o'clock. Like yesterday, yep. we went up to see John Paul and Michelle. Our first meal was at like 4.30. And I think the night before we stopped eating around six o'clock. So yeah. it just really depends. As far as net and total carbs, we don't like the regular net carbs that we started on. And the reason is there are a lot of companies that have figured out how they can give you a product and it's going to have like 30, 40, 50, even total. 25 total carbs. And somehow miraculously, they bring it down to zero net carbs right. or two net carbs. So even you're like when you're looking at that stuff, you have to look at what are the ingredients. For example, for me, I look at keto chow. There are certain things that you can deduct that I'm fine deducting, one of them being acacia fiber. I know the way it breaks down in my body. I know what it does. It actually becomes, it helps you with uh, short chain fatty acids. So I'm good with deducting that. What I'm not good with deducting is things like soluble corn fiber or stuff like that. So when you do a total carb or a variation of that, it helps you to stay on track. So we say a variation, we say, have maybe say like, I'm gonna do 10, 15, 20 net carbs but my total carbs can't exceed 20 or 30 or whatever number, but it allows you to not eat too much garbage. Well, and you know what I love about intermittent fasting is as somebody that's eating a keto way of life, I don't have to eat the way I used to when I was fueled by carbs. When you're fueled by carbs, you are really on the clock because you get that hangry feeling. Mm -hmm. I don't get hangry anymore. The hardest part for us was breaking up because you were so used to, I better eat at noon. Right. Like that is when lunch is. You can set your clock by it and I don't feel that way anymore. Right, right. So, okay, next one is from Bronson. Hey, Bronson. Bronson said, general guidelines to improve your body composition. I love this. Yeah. Said, increasing protein, intermittent fasting, increasing protein, increasing fat, resistance training, cardio, nutrient density, calorie restriction. In general, if you focus on the three things on the left, then you won't even need to think about the things on the right. So, in wow. other words, if you focus on increasing your protein, increasing your protein, resistant training, like working on your muscles and your nutrient density, like making sure that all of your fuel is coming from good sources, then you won't have to focus on intermittent fasting. You won't have to focus on increasing your fast, your fat. You won't have to focus on cardio and you won't have to focus on calorie restriction. I absolutely love that. That's great. We're actually really excited because we ordered something like this is, oh my gosh, this is so not Rachel and Joe. This is a non-scale victory. And I'm hoping it's gonna be here by the time we get back from uh, Utah, but we ordered a water rower 
Uh, we actually Who are we? we? We actually ordered one that's connected. It's kind of like a Peloton, but for rowing, because I love rowing machines. Even when I did um, CrossFit, I loved rowing. It's my favorite piece of equipment in a gym because you get so much resistance. You're getting some cardio, you're, but you're getting a lot of muscle resistance. You're, you're getting the rowing actions. So you're working your back, your shoulders, your arms. You're working your legs. You're working your back. So I love rowing, and I can't wait for that thing to come because you're going to be able to just sit down, and it's also – it's not hard on your feet and your joints like like running is for me. Like I can't do a lot of that stuff because of my ankle. So I'm excited about that. And that is a great way for increasing resistance and working on your muscles while still sitting down. I'm just amazed <laughs> that we are collecting and utilizing workout equipment. Yeah. That just blows my mind. I'm sorry, but if you knew us five years ago, you'd be it like, wouldn't have yeah, no, it wouldn't have they are not interested in fitness. Once we get it, we will do a video on it, but we are really excited about it. As a matter of fact, like John Paul and Michelle last night, we were like, can we hey, come over? We may need to come over because we love rowing machines and we don't have one. We have a bicycle and I'd much rather be into rowing than biking. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Debbie. Hey, Debbie. She says, I have been doing keto as I'm supposed to, making sure I'm tracking all of my macros, and I tend to be a little under in fat, a little under in calories, and several carbs under my daily cap. So I'm doing well in my eating habits. I also intermittent fast from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. I'm getting in electrolytes every day. I'm drinking between 80 and 90 ounces of water every day. I'm not eating a bunch of snacks. I'm getting at least 5,000 steps in every day, plus doing some other small exercises. But the scale is is not moving. My typical menu every day is coffee and four strips of bacon for breakfast, half of a keto chow shake and a keto ratio yogurt for lunch, and then a small portion meal in the evening, which are all made up from recipes out of my keto cookbooks. I can't figure out why I'm stagnant or why nothing seems to be happening. And yes, I did measure as well because we can't just go off the scale, but no change in inches or measurements either. Any ideas? Thanks in advance. You guys are the best. Okay, I'm going to leave this up. Okay. And here's where I'm gonna tell you, reading this really quickly, Debbie, you're not eating enough food. Yeah. And I know. That sounds crazy. That sounds crazy, because you're trying to lose weight. You are not eating enough food. Just quickly glancing at what you're eating. You're talking about four strips of bacon for breakfast, and depending on the strips of bacon, I'm gonna say you're somewhere around 250 calories, a half a keto chow shake, I don't know how much fat you're putting in there, but if you're making it normal, that's the, that's 260 calories and a keto ratio that's like 35 calories. So by lunchtime, you're eating three meals a day and by lunchtime, you haven't even had 500 calories yet. Yeah. And very little protein is, is from what I can see because if you're only having a half a keto chow shake, that's 12 grams of protein. Um, and then a small portion meal in the evening, you're not eating enough. I, we, you really need to stop calorie counting. And I know it is so, so hard. hard. Go back, take a look at our video. I believe it's step number three. I'll leave a link for it down below. We already linked it earlier in the video, but step number three on uh, how to get started on a keto and try the one-to-one. -one. I'm going to ask you, do me a favor. I know you're a Patreon of ours, so you can always send us an email. Yeah. And send it to either myself, Joe at Two Crazy Ketos, or Rachel at Two Crazy Ketos, and we will definitely help you guide along. I want you to give one-to-one -one one month. Yep. Okay. One to one for one month. What do we mean by one to one? For those of you who are new, what you're going to do is you're going to look at what is my dream goal weight. Like I want to look like Christy Brinkley, yep. right? In 1980, right? She's hot now. You could be 2021 Christy Brinkley. Okay. Well, that's, I was, <laughs> right. I, I want you to look at what is my dream goal weight? Like what is the weight that my doctor said I'm supposed to weigh according to the book. And I looked at him and go like, you're an idiot because I should, I would look stupid if I weighed. That's the weight I want you to use. Okay. Take that weight. So let's say it's 125 pounds. Okay. Or 135 or 150, whatever number it is. I want you to eat that many grams of protein per day or try to get as close to that as possible. Now, if you go over, no problem. no problem because those calories don't count. Don't matter. And you could even go back to all of the videos we did with Bronson, okay? But you're going to eat that much protein. Then on the other side, you're going to eat up to 150 grams of fuel. What is fuel? A combination of fat and protein. So we're not going to look at calories at fat all. Fat and carbohydrates. Fat and carbohydrates. Thank you. <laughs> fat and carbohydrates. So you're going to keep your carbs under 20. Try to use total. Keep it under 20. So if you're eating 20 total carbs, you're going to look at your fat 
is not going to exceed 130 grams. Now you can be under, you can get down to as much as 90 if you want, but doing it that way, you will get to your goal weight because that is your homeostasis. And again, don't worry about if you overeat protein, but doing that, you're going to be more satiated and you're going to see some results because the protein is going to help you with your muscle and also try to do a little bit of resistance. Even if the resistance is get in front of your chair and stand up and sit down like a hundred times, like do some squats, stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down, maybe grab some milk jugs and fill them with water and, and you know, like bend your arms and work your biceps. But if you do that, you're going to have some results. You may not see a scale number go down, but you're going to see differences on the, the measurements. You're going to see how your clothes fit, but I want you to give that one month. Don't worry about calories worry about the grams of protein and keeping your grams of fat underneath that. Yeah, you're gonna have success and you're gonna enjoy the journey a lot more, I think. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Misi. Misi said, just sharing something I have done for many years to add flavors with no carbs or calories. I use enhanced concentrated water flavors, so like wow. Mio, things yeah. like that. I make really great ribs using a Southern sweet tea. How interesting. Just like barbecue. I make chicken wings with that, tangerine, and lemonade flavors. Grape is great I with don't know. chopped meat. I oh, don't okay, know. I'm doing that. Oh. I experiment, I hate recipes, and I work with what I can find. When shopping, I just get an assortment of things, and I worry about what I'm going to do to them later. Tonight, I sauteed onions and sliced mushrooms in a large skillet with a stick of butter, used ginger, curry, Yum. paprika, garlic, and pepper. And then I added lemonade for a sweet touch. So interesting. Add three large chicken breasts, turn once in a few minutes, cover and simmer for 30 minutes. Tender, juicy, and flavorful. Wow. Macy, I may be stealing that and turning it into a video, but don't yes. worry, we will give you full credit. But that sounds really good. Never Using even, grape. I'm not excited about you lost me a grape okay but the sweet tea totally makes sense it does and one of the things that we really enjoyed from our local Publix that they don't make anymore and it's okay because we wouldn't buy it now was they used to have a southern fried sweet tea and it mm. had like a, a sweet or chicken yeah so it was like southern fried chicken with a sweet tea flavor so yeah. I'm interested in applying that to maybe our chicken wings that sounds really I think good. that would be really tasty if we could just find some chicken wings yeah now Next one is from Kelly. Hey, Kelly. They say, how long is Joe's yogurt good for in the fridge? Wondering if I should make some before I leave for five days so I have some when I get home. Okay. Uh, this is a good question. You want, you want the real answer? What's the answer? I have no idea. Um, here's what I can tell you. We've done it. We've had it in that fridge for at least two weeks with no issues, no bathroom pyrotechnics. It tasted really good. Um, I've actually gone even a little bit longer than two weeks. It got a little bit tangy at the end, uh, but I'm gonna tell you, look at how long is the milk that you're using it. With. That's good. So if the milk, if you're using Fairlife milk, which tends to have a much longer shelf life, if, if it's got a shelf life of three or four more weeks, you're probably gonna be good with the yogurt that way, unless it starts growing a bunch of mold and mildew on it. Yeah. But I, we've used it two, even three weeks later, and it has tasted good. And even Rachel has eaten it, and Rachel is one of the first people like, hey, I'm not eating butter that's been on the counter for 30 minutes. Yeah. So, you I'm know, really you have no that. problem about that kind of yeah. stuff. But yeah, it, it lasts for a while. Our uh, next one is from Carol. Hey, Carol. Carol said, okay, I just have to know if others feel this way too. When driving by farms with cows, et cetera, or a slaughterhouse, or you see animals in a transport trailer, do you feel bad even though you love meat or do you just think, yum? I feel so bad, Aww. LOL. If I had a farm, I'd wanna bring the horses and cows inside my house so they wouldn't get wet in the rain or snow. So <laughs> it's funny, we were actually talking about this the other day when yes. Zilla got killed and, and Rachel was very upset and she was like, I don't know if I want like chickens anymore. And I was like, this is kind of part of farming, right? You're gonna lose animals sometimes to predators and you know, if you're a farmer, a lot of times you're gonna take those animals and turn them into food. And she was like, it's kind of like, you know, they're my pets and I'm okay eating other chickens, but I know if I wanna eat my chickens, but 
you do feel bad. And I think we, we actually stole something from Autumn when it comes to this. And it's like, yeah. our goal is we want to eat meat where they had an awesome life mm -hmm. and one bad day. Yeah, I am willing to put some extra money into things like you know, pasture raised eggs, or when I find that there is a local farmer that is responsibly caring for their animals, then then I'm like, I'm willing to put the money down for that because mm -hmm. yeah, then I feel like I'm giving back to the animals by saying like, thank you for yeah. your sacrifice. I want you to live a full life. And part of the reason for us even having chickens in the backyard is not just because we wanted quick access to eggs, but it was kind of us giving back because we knew how we would be as pet owners. And we wanted to be like, okay, we can't take care of every single chicken that's out there, but we can give a good life to the chickens that we have. And we yeah. know what we're doing with them. And that was kind of a thank you. Yeah, even the day before Zilla, you know, got attacked, and we actually had two other chickens, if you didn't see on our live stream, also got attacked, but they survived. Yes. Um, and they're doing very well, by the way. For So thank you for everybody who messaged thank us you. like, hey, I'm sorry. But we were out in the pool the day before and just watching our chickens run around and think of like, wow, they have, an awesome life, especially when you look at the way some chickens are treated in like these like places that just sell eggs for 79 cents a dozen, right? They they don't just have a little coop. They have our entire backyard. Of course, we don't have a grass in our backyard anymore. Yeah. But we really believed in like giving them a really good life. We want them to have a lot of space. And it's the same way with everything. I mean, we actually just finished watching uh, a show on Discovery Channel uh, called Edge of Alaska. And, you know, say what you want about reality shows. Something that I really took away from it is when the one guy who is raising his whole family out in this town, McCarthy, Alaska, and they're trying to live completely off of the land by themselves. And when he has to slaughter one of his goats or his cow, he like literally sits down and says like, thank you for providing for our family. Yeah. And he tries to give them a really good life up to the day that he, even up to when he actually has to, you know, slaughter them where he's giving them food so they don't even know it's coming. Right. Well, and I think about there's all these little extras that we can do. Like it's very hot outside. So Joe made sure that we put in a, a water spritzing system in our backyard so that they don't even have to live as hot as we do. Right. Which I think is just, you know, little extra things that we can do to love on them and know that every single day of their life, they're loved and cherished, pet held. Like, I just, I love them. Yep. Next one's from Ann. Oh, Ann, this is great. She says, your weight will fluctuate, your value will not. Yeah, I love that post. I mean, it actually could have been one of our Keto College yeah, adjunct professors. Yeah, that's a professor really, statement. But I really wanted to kind of end on that because it is such a good thing because I think so many of us put our value in what is that number on the scale. And as we've said before, the scale is the devil. Yes. And the reason we say that is because that scale, at least for me, it's never giving me good news, even when it's down. Like I said earlier when we first started, like, hey, the scale is down. But you know what I've had to battle because that scale is down? Hey, the scale is down. You know what that means? You can have two brownies instead of one. Right. You can have four steaks instead of two. That, I mean, that's what that number goes down. And then when the number is up, it tells me you're a loser. Is is that not how you feel with it? It's, it's very, I'm very emotionally connected to it. And then as an emotional eater, you can see the cycle right, right. there. Like I am, it, it causes an emotion in me and then I emotionally eat, whether it is good or it's bad. And it's really nice to have that reminder to disconnect from that thinking because we don't know how much you weigh. I'm right. looking at you right now. I have no idea how much you weigh, but I love you. Right. I know that you are valuable and you are talented and you have particular giftings. You add to our family and we're so glad you're here. I don't need to know how many pounds that scale says. Right. And I hope that you can look at it the same way. When you look in the mirror, don't see the number, see you and right. see all of the, the good things that you bring to this world because we're celebrating that. Yeah, I mean, I look at that scale and I'm I'm like, you know what, whether the scale is up or down, you know what I'm feeling good about? Look at how baggy my shirt is. Yeah. I mean, I probably just mess with the microphone, but I'm gaining boobs and you're losing them. That's right. Way to go. My, my man boobs are going. I know. Away. So, I mean, like, like we said, it's one number. Let's look at everything else. Let's look at, are your shirts loose? Are your pants loose? How do you feel? Is your arthritis gone? Are you off of your diabetes medication? If all of those things are true, but that scale's not moving, who cares? Right? Who cares? Who 
cares. No. So we have one more coming from this week, and it is from Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Jerry said, I hit a new low on my yes. weight this morning, 267.8. That is a total of 59, 59 pounds. pounds. Shed courtesy of Keto and Keto Chow. I went to the store and I got a smaller size of shorts, size 40 versus a 44, 46 wow. when I started. And new double XL shirts versus 3XL and 4XL shirts. I'm making great progress. Yes, you are. I will reevaluate the goal weight once I get there and see if I can go further. But for now, 200 pounds is my goal. Incredible. And I know, we just got through telling you don't worry about the scale. That's why I'm leaving this up here because we're looking at, who cares about the 267? Is, is a loss of 59 pounds awesome? It's amazing. It's amazing. And I don't want to discount that. But what I want to see is, I went from a 44, 46 to a 40. That's huge. I went from a 3XL, 4XL to a 2XL. So. You know what, Jerry? You may get to 200 and go, you know what? I'm wa I want to be in a medium, yeah. right? You just don't know. That's why that number means nothing. And I even look at our good friend Heath, right? We joke with Heath, you know, they're Patreons of ours, and we had sent them our 2KK meathead shirts, which the only way to get them is if you are a Patreon. And, you know, he sent us a thing, and I'm like, what size are you? And he goes, I'm a 3XL. He was like, no. And I said to him, she, his like, wife, how? Shelly, I'm like, you are not a 3XL. You are a 2XL. I watch your videos. Your shirts are super baggy. You're a 2XL. I'm paying for this shirt, so <laughs> I'm sending you a 2XL. He's such a dad. And he goes, well, I am, right? Because these are all my family. These you are my what children, I want. and I'm old. So I sent him a 2XL and he jokes back. He goes, it's a little sunk, but he fit in it, right? Mm -hmm. And then what does he do? He sends me a message this week. He goes, Joe, guess what? I can't wear the 3XLs anymore. And now I'm in a 2XL. And so now I'm going to send him an extra large. Yep. Because now my goal is I want to see, this is my goal. My goal for my friend Heath is buy Keto Palooza in September in Louisville, Kentucky. Oof. I want to see him in an extra large. Oh and I my think goodness. he's going to get there. I think so, so who too. cares what that scale is, even though he started out with an astronomical number on that scale. The man has gone from like a 5XL to a 2XL. Well, that is progress. Well, and think about like, I'm glad that you're excited about clothing. I'm excited about health. If yes. you want to be inspired, take a look at his MS journey. Yes. Him and Shelly have been walking through this very specific medical issue. And, and the way that Keto has been speaking into this health concern has been amazing. And the success that he is having in that area of his life, wow. I mean, that is incredible We may success. just have to take him up and buy that house down the street from him and move out of Florida. If we <laughs> right. can just get our children to go. Anything to I get to be there tomorrow. have coffee every morning with Shelly would like be the best because hello, she is the incredible shrinking woman too. I noticed her on the, the Friday night, you know, Hungry Horde. You barely recognize her face anymore. Right. I mean, it's like thinning out. So that is going to be this week's Keto on the Couch. We really appreciate everybody for joining us for sticking through to the end here if you have you know what let's go ahead and do something if you have stuck all the way to the end Ooh. what is a good emoji for them to comment down below how about a plane because we're going to be getting on one this yeah. week so if you have watched this all the way to the end i want you to put some plane emojis down below let's do that that we will know you've watched now it. again just a reminder if you are in the Texas area, go ahead and try to get yourselves over to Goody Beats Roundup this weekend. And if you're in Utah or close to Utah, please, please, I'd please. say within 10 hours of driving, why not head on over to the Keto Chow headquarters at 6 p.m. on Saturday. Whatever time for that is in Utah. Good old fashioned meetup. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, check out some of the other Keto on the Couch videos because there are 121 of them, and I have them all linked right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. I'm gonna go to lunch with Anthony. <laughs> Bye. Bye.